Hi, my name is Kay Sugi and I'm a teacher and puppeteer with Popperoos based in Sydney, Australia. And today I'd like to introduce you to a friend of mine. Her name is Kate Roberts and she is a primary school teacher teaching kindergarten to grade six. And she's also specializing in teaching ESL, which is English as a second language. And she's come today to share with us how she uses puppetry in her work. So Kate, thank you so much for coming today. You're very welcome. Uh, can you please tell us what kinds of puppets you use in your classroom and how? Sure. I use a variety of puppets in my classroom on a daily basis. At the moment, I'm teaching kindergarten to year two. So I have a range of between about four years old and 10 years old in the classes that I teach. Mm -hmm. And so within these classrooms, I will go in and work one on one with some children or even take a whole class with the English focus. So the puppets that I have this one here is Dr. Hoot. He's one of my favourites. He's really great for when I have to walk into a classroom for the first time that day and to get the student's attention. So his primary purpose is behaviour management. So I'll just walk in, sit myself at the front of the room with him sitting quite quietly on my arm. I'll sit and watch the children. And as I'm watching, he will also look down and make sure everyone is ready to learn. And he's a really great way just to get the children engaged. As soon as they see him come into the classroom, they'll stop and they get quite excited, but they'll sit beautifully and quietly while he's there. So Dr. Hood I use for behaviour management in each of my classrooms. This one's a little bit more noisy than Dr. Hood. This is Squawk and he's a rainbow parrot. And he has his name because... He has quite a loud squawk. <laughs> and so basically I use him for when I'm doing writing lessons with the students. And I'll be writing up on the board, we'll be doing a modelled session, and I'll purposely make some sort of error, like missing out on a capital letter or a full stop or a spelling error. And as soon as I do that, squawk looks up at the board and... <coughs> and that alerts the children to the fact that I've made an error. So I'll be writing away and he'll go... <coughs> what? I've made an error? <coughs> Can you find where it is? And the children then have to go back through, reread everything that's been written on the board to check where that error is. And once they've found it, they'll pop their hand up and help me to find what it is. It's a really great tool for if you've got students who aren't checking their work before bringing it to you. Because I find that when I model a new squawk to alert myself to the errors, when they go back and do their own independent writing, they'll sit there, write down, and before they bring it to me, they'll often go back and check for errors as well. So he's really useful in the writing classroom. Such a beautiful puppet. He's very pretty. <laughs> and the last one I have is quite a large puppet. Oh, she is big. Very beautiful as mm. well. <laughs> and this is one of the few puppets I have that actually has a voice. This one here is Lazy Susan. And I use Lazy Susan during reading lessons. So if I have a big book that I'm reading with the students, Lazy Susan will sit there and read it with us. And she might say things like, if we're reading a book about a little boy who's lost his dog, she might ask some comprehension questions like, Miss Roberts? Yes, Susan? Why is the boy so sad? That's a good question. Can you help me? And we'll ask the children if they can help Susan to work out what the answer to the question is. And it's just a really great way to get the children thinking about the story, engaging with the text, also looking at the visuals. So she's great for comprehension. And something that's really good to see with Kate using her puppets is she focuses her puppet's eyes. That's really important when you're using puppetry so that you can get as much attention from the children as possible. And one way you do that is when you're talking with a puppet, you try and move only your thumb because as soon as you move the top of your hand, you lose the eye focus. So it's really good that you're seeing that you're doing that. Another thing is the voice that you use. It's really good that you're articulating your words and your character voice is really easy to understand. It's just a little bit higher than your own voice. That's all somebody needs to do. A little higher or a little lower than your own voice because when you're using character voices, sometimes it's not so easy to understand. So that's really good to see. And you want to engage the students in the world of the puppet. Mm -hmm. And if the puppet's not looking at them, it's hard for them to feel engaged as well. But Kay, I noticed here that you've brought in some puppets of your own. I have. Would you be able to share those with everyone? Sure. So the first puppet that I'd like to show you, his name is Rocky and he lives in a recycling bin. 
And so Rocky is a very quiet puppet and he's really good for when I want to walk into a class and just do something that needs a lot of their attention and I need them quiet at the beginning. Mm. So usually I say something like, can you please say, Rocky, come out? And I'll say, Rocky, come out. He's very cute. And it's, if they make a lot of noise, you'll and you'll go right back in. And only when they're really quiet, you'll come out and engage with them. And Rocky doesn't talk, so he'll just talk to me. Yes, Rocky, we're talking about puppets today. <laughs> okay, bye Rocky. So he's really, really good for quiet things and he's quite shy and it really engages the really shy children. Mm -hmm. um, the good thing about Rocky is he's sort of self-contained in his own little bag. The next puppet I've come to show you, I, he doesn't have a bag like that, so I've made a bag. And why do you use the bags for your puppets? Is there a specific reason? Yes, there is. So you can see here these puppets are really exciting to look mm. at and they can also potentially be kind of distracting. So if you want to just talk to your students one-on-one -on -one with them without having them looking at the puppet, it's really good just to have them in a bag. And again, with Rocky, if they're being too noisy, the puppet goes straight back mm. in the bag. So that's just one of the reasons why I use a bag. So this is Bruce. Bruce is a lot louder. <laughs> so I usually say, what is your favourite can anybody guess what Bruce's favorite fruit is? And today, I think it might be strawberries. Did somebody say strawberries? G'day. G'day, Bruce. Hi. So this is Bruce. And Bruce isn't the brightest puppet. What? Yeah. So he's <laughs> used for things like revision. So he might not remember what the children learned the day before. Or he might need them to sort of reiterate what they've just learned. So he's really, really good for that. And he's also good for a laugh and a reward at the end of the day. Boy, Can I ask you, with your puppets, mm -hmm. what age range have you used them with? And what, do you find, what age range do you find them most effective with? Uh, for me, in terms of using puppets in a primary school context, so that's kindergarten to grade six, because that's mm -hmm. the sort of education we work in, I've used puppets all throughout. Uh, these sorts of puppets I've used mostly with kindergarten to grade two, mm -hmm. but I have used them all up till grade four. So Bruce and Rocky, the children know them really well, and you can just put some um, jokes that are more appropriate for their level. For older grades, it's really good to get the older children, so the upper primary school children, to use their own puppets mm -hmm. and even invite them to do their puppets for the younger children to teach them something as well. Mm -hmm. Okay.